Dr. Tedros Adenom Ghebreyesus, Director General of the World Health Organization, has applauded the government of Rwanda for its role in effectively managing and curbing the spread of the Merbuk virus outbreak. This was reiterated in a press conference on the Merbuk virus outbreak. We have the details with Adams Kwizera. A bug virus outbreak for nearly a month. And over the last six days, the country has seen a significant reduction in cases with no new cases or deaths reported. According to the Minister of Health, Dr. Sabin Sanzimana, noted on the recent steps made in fighting against Marburg virus, offers hope for quick containment. We wish this continues, but if, even if we had one case, for us is an opportunity uh, to continue to trace every uh, single contact and case uh, before we put a uh, final end uh, to this outbreak. So as you can see, we've done a lot of testing, more than 4,700. This using PCR is not an easy procedure, but we've always uh, upgrading our lab capacity in every province. Uh, we have a lab doing these tests. We've seen a trend um, of recoveries that was um, uh, actually better than what was predicted, which is uh, something also to uh, highlight uh, with the Healthcare workers doing a great job to make sure every single life can be saved. I'll be showing some of the latest uh, news about case management. In a press briefing on Marburg virus outbreak that took place on this Sunday, Dr. Tedros Adenom Ghebreyesus, Director General of the World Health Organization, the Brecho, appreciated the government of Rwanda for its role in effectively managing and curbing the spread of the Marburg virus outbreak. The knowledge he has about what's happening and the measures they are taking is, is heartwarming. He's on top of it and I was so glad because in emergencies like this, uh, in outbreaks like this, the role of the top leadership is, is very important. But not only that, the way they moved fast as soon as the first uh, case was reported was um, uh, really, really uh, fast. For instance, um, therapeutics and therapeutics started within days. Actually, imagine the logistics of having the therapeutics and start using it. And vaccines, I think, within a week, and all the approvals and so on expedited. That's leadership again. So the response was fast. Dr. Tedros also reflected on Randa's efforts to strengthen its health system and critical care capacity, but also noted that the British will continue to collaborate with Rwanda in curbing this virus. This reflects the work Rwanda has done over many years to strengthen its health system, to develop capacities for critical care and life support that can be deployed both in regular hospital care and in emergencies. And I have heard this not only from local doctors, but also from foreign nationals who are serving in the treatment center and other facilities in Rwanda. Dr. Ted Rosadanom Gerbrasus reaffirmed on the organization's stance advising against travel and trade restrictions to Rwanda. He also asked countries that impose such restrictions to lift them, noting that these restrictions could negatively impact Rwanda's economy. And that's why I said, the travel restrictions, we WHO advises against it, and and there should not be travel restrictions, and especially when you have a government, a country that's taking responsibility, it's good to encourage rather than try to take those measures that uh, doesn't that, that doesn't help. Two Marburg virus patients in Rwanda were successfully taken off mechanical ventilation after more than 10 days of care from the country's multidisciplinary clinical team. Dr. Sabine Sansimana affirms that this is a crucial step towards ending this Marburg virus. We've acquired, including uh, vaccination, uh, which came very quickly. Uh, it's a rapid uh, access and deployment of this uh, vaccine that uh, is one of the factors that we are seeing uh, rapid uh, containment of the virus. We've been vaccinating the healthcare workers at the front line, the contacts of cases, and this also reassured those who are at service, but those who have been in contact that you're not going to get the virus, at least you have another level of protection. 
So we have reached more than 1,000 uh, people uh, receiving this vaccination. And uh, we thank all our partners uh, who have contributed to this uh, effort. And uh, they are here in the room, so we want also to appreciate uh, your support. And when uh, time comes, you may also uh, make some uh, comment on, on this. And so far, the uptake and um, the follow-up on any adverse events is going well. Uh, and we believe that is also a great contribution to what we can do when an outbreak happens. The second question, Doctor. We saw uh, you visited the Biontech plant. During his visit in Rwanda, Dr. Tedros also visited Biontech plant in Kigali, where as he emphasized that, in addition to producing vaccines, the plant will also play a significant role in creating jobs and contributing to the growth of continent's economy. Uh, and I hope it will be more competitive. Not only vaccine production, it will also create jobs. It will contribute to the economy. By the way, we should not see it as part of just producing vaccines only. Um, it, it also brings uh, opportunities, economic opportunities, creates jobs and improves the economy. So we should see that. And the commitment from the government to produce vaccines from my exchanges, including with the president and minister, is exactly that. It's, it's a, a, as part of the economic development. It's not just producing vaccines for the uh, case of producing vaccines or just only to address the equity issue. It's, it's more than that. And I'm glad it's, uh, you know, that's the basic principle. And I hope this con will contribute to vaccine equity in the future. Uh, but we have other initiatives as well. The Ministry of Health highlighted a 50% reduction in the third week. Signet progress with infections now done by 92%, while 1,070 people have received vaccines. Adam Squizera. Our TV news.